Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, where it's my pleasure to be joined by TV producer Jason Anthony. How are you, Jason? Very good. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's great. For, uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, one of the world's greatest living poets, Nikki Giovanni. How are you, Nikki? Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here and I'm doing good. And it's always nice to be with my friend Jason. And this is the first time that we have worked together on a story. And Jason invited me to, uh, he knows some people and he said, you know, why don't you write a story about Wakanda and the Black Panther? I said, well, the Black Panthers that I know are from Oakland, California. So that was very easy, Huey and Bobby. And so if you read our piece, you saw, you saw them right away. And we know that the Black Panther is uh, powerful, but it's also a very, it's a very sweet and a very kind. So we had an animal that we had to deal with. Well, how are we gonna get him there? Well, every, all life starts with an egg, all life. It doesn't matter what. So we have an egg and Jason and I were wondering, well, how, what are we gonna do with the egg? Well, we have to, it has to be hatched. <laughs> and so <laughs> now we've got an egg, but we have to find a way to get the egg there. And of course, I think that human beings are jealous of birds. I think that, you know, we've learned how to swim you know, we've learned how to, we, we've learned a lot, but we cannot fly. Can't fly. We can only yeah. fly with an instrument. So now Jason and I came up with the eagle. And so we've got the eagle now who's going to take, he's going to take, take uh, the, the, the king back. Jason, how long have you been, how long have you been a fan of uh, T'Challa for? Oh, my whole life. Yeah. My whole life. Yes. Yeah, as early as when I had my own money to go buy a comic book. I think Nikki was turned on to T'Challa by her granddaughter. Yes. Yeah, she was the one, Grandma Nick. She said, have you, have you seen the movie? And I said, no. And she said, Grandma Nick, I saw it 12 times. And I thought, well, maybe I better go. She was, and then I was talking to Jason. He said, oh, I've seen it too. And I did not grow up on comic books. I, I think the first real book I wrote was uh, The Origin, actually, of the Species by, by Darwin. And I was about 12 years old. And nobody was reading those kind of books. And I know the next one I wrote was, that I read was uh, Rachel Carson's um, Silent Spring. So coming into Wakanda and coming into the, the life and the, 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 the gold, but not the gold as we know it, but the, the important, uh, what am I trying to say? The important strength as I knew it, I learned it from, from uh, really from Rachel Carson that we have to take care of the, of, the, of, the, of the planet. And so I could bring that in and Jason could bring in the, the history because Jason knew all about how, how that whole situation he was talking about, he, he landed everybody in Tanzania, which I thought was really good, but then he moved them in and Imana uh, moved to Imana, of course, because every man, and Jason might agree if I get him to smile on this, every man needs a woman to lead him. So, <laughs> yes. So, in my yes. name now, <laughs> isn't yeah. that true? <laughs> yeah, so in the story, T'Challa was brought into Wakanda on the border of Tanzania. Yeah, very interesting. And, uh, and why, that partic why, that, why that route in? I did some background on the history of the story and there's different versions, but one version is Wakanda uh, is kind of hidden between two or three countries in a valley, I believe, uh, naked to the human eye and so forth. So his adventure to get him into Wakanda is interesting, but he starts in Tanzania as an exchange student or as a student uh, and an intern. That's very interesting. Now, now, guys, what does what does T'Challa and what does the what does what what do and Wakanda what do they represent to you? But to me, it was magic because it couldn't be, it couldn't be real. And I was surprised when when Jason said he has to come through Tanzania because I had it in my mind because I'm an I'm an American and so I have it in my mind that that he would come through Ghana. He would come on the west coast and come in where we have, of course, slavery is gonna come from the West Coast. So it depends on how much time we wanted to spend on slavery. But if we come through Tanzania, I'm through Tanzania. And I thought, I gave it some thought and you were right. Absolutely right. Let's come through free people who are going to create something that nobody else can get to. 
because if they had come through, for example, uh, which is wonderful, uh, Ghana, or if they had come through uh, Ivory Coast or something, people would have to, by necessity, you would know about them because nobody's gonna have a, a, a nation or a, a, a community that nobody knew about. So bringing them on the east side, I thought was quite, was quite right and quite brilliant. So we just, we kept going back and forth on it. Yeah, it was interesting. We had probably a creative writing session on the phone once a week. Yeah. Uh, T'Challa flies in, uh, he misses a flight and ends up in Africa by non-conventional means. I don't want to tell too much of the story, but uh, he meets some interesting people along the way who are not what they appear to be, and they're all kind of guiding him to where he's supposed to be. That's, that's very interesting. So uh, what were your inspirations for, for writing this story? Where were you coming from in creating this story? For me, it was my grandmother because you listen to the spirits. Now we did not do a spirit thing, but if you're reading my poetry, you see I'm always involved in some spirit, not, not, not uh, um, magic or anything, but somebody, when things don't go right, you can just sit down and say, now wait a minute, what's, what's going on here? Which is what he had to do. And in doing that, he got the blanket. Oh, am I not supposed to say that? No, and that was teasing. precious. And when I had that was precious. And when I had cancer, I had a quilt. And I that was that was 13, 14 years ago, and I'm still here. So I had that in my mind that there's something special about these these this cloth that comes together and takes you where you want to be. If you listen to the spirits, you will get to where you want to be. And so Jason accepted that. He thought it was that, that was a good idea. That's just how we're going to move him around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That. That. that I, I. I. feel that. Now, this book, this anthology, is dedicated to the great Chadwick Boseman. Um, what did you? What did you feel about his performance in the movie? And what do you think he represents to that character, T'Challa? I have another fun fact for you, Andrew. Yeah. Chadwick knew about this book. Really. Yeah, Jesse told him. Jesse interviewed him. Uh, Nikki, I don't even think you knew this, but uh, Jesse interviewed him. Uh, I was a radio producer also. Jesse uh, hosted a television show, and I believe he recorded uh, an interview with Chadwick, and he told him uh, about the project. So Chadwick knew. Uh, that's so. Uh, and what did you what did what did you think of his performances, T'Challa? It was amazing. It was, and I don't think it can be. Re I don't think it, it can be repeated. I think uh, whoever comes after him is going to have to be a different king. Yeah, I, I I think you're right. I think it's kind of an indelible performance, and uh, I think uh, Chadwick's one of those people who you know he, he he burned really bright for a very short period of time, and but the body of work he created, you know, over the last five six years was just incredible, you know, and uh, and I think he, he sits at the heart of the success of the Black Panther movie. But I think it achieved so much on so many levels, which I think is why it's so beloved and so embraced, you know. And uh, and for people like yourselves to be taking this mythology, this story, and exploring other areas with it, I think that's a truly beautiful thing. Yeah, but now we're back to spirits because yeah. we've lost the body of, 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 of Chadwick, but his spirit came through because people saw this movie well, my, my granddaughter saw it 12 times. People saw this movie and it said something else. That's what Jason's, something else was being said. It wasn't just a good performance. There was something else coming out that, that really touched people in a way that, that we seldom see. Almost, almost, and not very different than Heath Ledger. Yeah. Am I right? No, I think, I think you run to something with that. I think that's very similar. You know, somebody who had, who had a very high level of ability and had the ability to speak to a lot of people and, and came and performed in that one indelible role very shortly before passing away. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's very, I think it's very similar. I mean, but I think perhaps it's, I think, I think uh, Chadwick's contribution is even greater in some way because, 
you know, with Heath Ledger, what you had was this tremendous artistry of that performance, and that performance as the Joker will live on, right? But I think uh, I, I think what Chadwick did wasn't just deliver a great performance. I think he truly inspired a whole variety of people from multiple generations. And uh, there's a message of great positivity in that film, I think, personally. And uh, to see it embraced by everybody, you know, and to see families enjoy it en masse. In talking to some of the other authors of Tales of Wakanda, they've all got a story about how their entire family went to see the movie and they, you know, they dressed, they, they dressed up and they really engaged with it. I think that's a very unusual thing, actually. It's very powerful. Yeah. And I think that again, his spirit carried that, not just his performance, but there was something else he was giving on screen and something else he was giving that everybody felt that we felt. And even somebody like me, because I don't actually like movies and I don't go to movies very often. And when I went, that's why my granddaughter had to say, you know, Grandma Nick, you have to go. And, but when I went, you could feel that there was something else in the, in the theater, there's something else in the air. And that's, you have to give Chadwick credit for that. That's something he put out to us. That's wonderful. And it's something that Jason and I wanted to put into our story. I think that's so true. And I think that's a great point on which to end. I think that that, that spiritual dynamic is such an important thing. And uh, I, 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 Tales of Wakanda, Black Panther Tales of Wakanda, including them, this magnificent story, Immaculate Conception, is available now for pre-order from the links attached to this interview. Jason, Nikki, thanks so much for spending the time with me to take you through your take me through your contribution to this anthology, which I'm, I guarantee you the people watching this at home are are, are really going to enjoy. It's a truly special project, and we're proud to be involved with it. Thank you again. Well, thank you. Thank you Jason, both so Jason, much. Smile, yeah. Jason. You're doing, Jason is doing his expression. <laughs> <Yeah. practice>. Smile. <laughs> it's really lovely thank to you. meet you both. Thanks so much for your time. You. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.